Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this business letterhead in Word. So let's open a new document. And the first thing we need to do is begin to insert our graphics. So go to insert, shapes, scroll all the way down, select this shape here, click and drag out the shape. Now whilst I'm doing all of this, this is all personal preference. So you can use these little adjusters here, these little yellow boxes where you can make your own adjustments and these adjustments as well. It's all personal preference. I'll just move it up to the top here. Now all shapes have a borderline and a fill color. So I'm going to get rid of the borderline, make sure it's selected, make sure you're on shape format, go to the outline tab and select no outline, then shape and then select a color of your choice. If you can't see a color of your choice, go to more fill colors. Here you have the color wheel. You can move this little circle around the color wheel and you can darken and lighten that color and it will appear here in this box and just click OK. Now I'm going to copy and paste this one. The easiest way to do that is to select it, hold down your Alter Option key, click and drag. Deselect, reselect this one. I'm just going to change the color of this one. Just go to Shape Fill, select the color of your choice. This one, I'm going to change the fill color to a gradient. So select it. Again, make sure you're on shape format. Format pane. Go to the bucket icon and go to fill. And go to gradient fill. Now I've rehearsed this so my colors are already there. But what you'll need to do is to select one of these little sliders. You can move them left and right. If you look at my document you can see how sliding this left and right will affect my gradients and again this one as well. So just select one of these, go to colour, click on the drop down and once again you can select a colour of your choice. Sorry you can't see it all but I've selected from the purple line and then this one again is from the purple line of colours on the right hand side. Then you can select the direction of your gradient so select from any of these. Again, it's gone off the side of my screen. Apologies for that. And then you can copy and paste a second one. Hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag. Deselect. Reselect this one and using this little circular arrow, just turn this one around slightly and move it up. Just extend it a little bit. And you can see it's gone in front of the blue one at the back. So go to Layout and then go to send backwards, click on the drop down and select center back. And then you can move this up any way you like, move it around. Same with this one, we can slightly rotate it to the other way, move it across again, send backwards, center back, and that one will go underneath there. Now for this one, what I actually did was change the gradient to the other side so I can go over to direction and I can simply change the direction of my gradient and you can see it basically swaps the colors around. So once you've done all that, we can just copy and paste this for the bottom and then just make some changes. So to select it all, just go to this selection pane. You can see we've got all three of our graphics in. Select the top one, hold down the shift key, select the bottom one and then simply hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag, and that will be a second group. What you can do is go to Group, select Group, rotate the entire group round, and move it down to the bottom. Now you can leave it just as it is, or you can ungroup it, deselect them all, and then you can just make some adjustments if you want to make the bottom ones slightly different. Again, all personal choice, so now we're going to insert your logo. So go to insert, picture, picture from file. Then you can select from any of your logos and then just click insert. I've actually going to copy and paste mine across and then you can just simply move that into place. You can use your arrow keys to make finer adjustments. And then to create all of this contact information at the bottom, it's quite simple. Go to insert. Go to icons and in the search menu you want to put location 
select one of the appropriate icons. I will select this one, click insert. You can see it's appeared here, but it's gone underneath all of our graphics. So we just need to select it, go to wrap text, and this time go to in front of text, and then go back over to the search bar, type in globe and press enter, select the one of your choice, insert, wrap text in front of text, email, select one, insert, wrap text in front of text. You can see they're all coming up here, but they're just behind each other at the moment. And then phone, select one you like, click insert, wrap text in front of text. So now we're just going to zoom in. Now if you're struggling to select any of your icons at the moment, we're selecting all of these graphics. Just go back up to your selection pane, which is now in these tabs over here. And then you can start to make some selections. You can use these eyeballs here and it will show you which ones you're selecting. So it's all of these graphics here. So we can select them all, hold down the shift key and select them all and move them all. If they won't move, just use the arrow keys, move them away from all of the graphics and deselect, reselect just one of them and then you can begin to move them out. Okay, so we want them all to be exactly the same size but obviously they're a bit too big at the moment. So let's just select them all, then go to graphics format Make sure that this little tick is highlighted because we're going to change them all at once and keep that square ratio. Let's go to 1.3 and press enter. And you can see they're a lot smaller now. Again, you can choose your own. It's completely up to you. And we can also make some customizations to these as well. So obviously they're going to go on a darker background. So once they're selected, we can go to the graphics format tab. Go to Graphics, Fill and White, which means you won't be able to see them. Bear with me. Click on the outline. I'm going to select this color here and you can just about see they've got an outline color. You don't have to do this, but it's completely up to you. So now we're just going to move them to the top of the page. And the reason I'm doing this, you don't have to do this. The reason I'm doing it is because when I zoom in, Word likes to jump to the top of the page in all instances. So if I put anything at the bottom, then it's just going to jump around and it's going to make your viewing really awful. So I'm going to do this all at the top. So the next thing to do is go to insert text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. And then you can type in your number. And then we're going to go to shape fill and select no fill and outline, select no outline, go to the home tab, Go to the text color here and select white. If it hasn't done that, it's because you've got the cursor inside the box. So you can simply highlight the text, click on the white text color, and it will change that text to white. And then we've got the little telephone here. Let's just reduce the size of this box here. And you can place the number roughly in the center of that telephone, top and bottom. When you're happy, then you can just use the arrow key and move it away, leaving a nice gap. Select them both by holding down that command or control key to select multiple items. Then go to layout, group, and select group. So that's your first one there. Now, just before you group it, what you want to do is click on this one and make a copy. So literally hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag, and you'll make up a duplicate. Just go back and group these together. This one, you obviously just want to pop in your email address. Just make the box a little bigger so it can accommodate all of the text. Once again, put it in the middle of your icon move it away and give it a similar space or the same space as the telephone, make a copy and then deselect, reselect this one, hold down the command or control key, group, select group and I'll do the same with the other two, speed up the video and I'll come and show you how to align them at the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to select them all. Now they're all grouped together. 
and I'm going to move them all down to the bottom. Let's just zoom out. So these can go anywhere you like. So I'm going to put this one over here. Don't worry too much about the alignment. We'll come back to that in a second. And then we're going to put these two on top of each other here. So once you've got some rough alignment, the key is to line these two up first, holding down that command and control key, select them both. Now, you do have to be careful because you can see there are not the same margins to the left and right. And what this alignment tool does is if I select a line to left, you can see it's aligned the boxes up. But if there is not a, the same margin, they're not completely lined up here. So sometimes you have to do this by eye, and often I will do it with an arrow. You can see here, if I line up these two, so the, the telephone and the these two here will be perfectly lined up, and then I can just move this top one up, make sure that's aligned. With these at the bottom, we can select them all, go to Align, and if you select this tool here, Distribute Horizontally, I mean, there's a, an exact space between them all. However, it's measuring the boxes and not the margin. So again, it will give you a rough idea, but if you feel that there's a bigger space between one than the other, then obviously you can do that by eye. The next one is to select them all, go to align and align to middle, and that will align them up through the middle, through these boxes. And generally that one's pretty accurate. Then you can group them all together and then you can move them left or right, down or up, depending on where you want them to fit on your page. Don't forget, if you do do that, just make sure you move this one as well, just so it all lines up. And then you can see how your page will look, and then you can check you're happy with it. Now, the key thing to this is because we put all the graphics in this one page, if you then go to another page, you'd have to copy and paste it all across unless you put this in the headers and footers. I'll quickly show you how to do that. So you go to your selection pane here, go to the top one, scroll down to the bottom, hold down the shift key and select. You can see we've selected everything. Go to group, select group, and then home, select copy, select it all, press delete, and then double click at the top of your page we're now in the headers and footers. Click paste or command or control V. Now you're in the headers and footers. You can pop everything back into place. Double click in the center. And now you can see that's in the headers and footers because it's slightly grayed out. And so if I need to add a page, let's go to layout, breaks, next page. You can see it will just add it to the next page. Now, although it's greyed out, if you sent this as a Word document, it would be greyed out. But if you printed it out or saved it as a PDF, then it would look absolutely normal as it was before. Now, what you'll also notice is if I click, you can see on this first page that my cursor is at the top here. So if I start to type, you can see where my text is. It's all the way at the top here. So there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can just press the return key and you can begin to type as normal. Alternatively, you can use your rulers here. If you can't see them, go to view, make sure rulers are checked. Then you can hover between the gray and white section, click and drag till it's below your design. And then when I try to click up here, you can see it won't because it's within this gray area of the margins. And then you can begin to type as well. However, I generally don't do that. I tend to use text boxes and I'll show you why. Go to insert, text box, draw text box, click and draw out the text box. Put in your text, deselect it. You can see the black outline, so reselect it. Shape format, take off that black outline. Shape fill, no fill. And now when I move it all the way around, you can see here that I've got a transparent background. And what it does mean is I can move this and make sure it fits my page perfectly. So if I want to look more like this, I can. Or if I want to move it inwards and make my margins better, I can do that. But don't forget, you can go to layout, align, align to center. 
to ensure all of your text is perfectly lined up. Once again, you won't be able to continually type and it flows onto the next page because this is a text box. So if you're intending to do a second page, a second page, you can simply copy and paste the text box across. It's absolutely fine. It's just a personal preference. So what I am going to do is bring all of this forwards again because I'm only producing one page. So now this is all perfectly lined up and this is what I like to have as my personal letterheads. So if you want to save this as a template, go to File, Save as Template. You can use this over and over again. It'll ask you to save it as a different document. Make sure you're in, you're in Templates and make sure you're in Microsoft Word Templates as well and rename your document. So I'm going to name mine Pink and Blue Letterhead and then I can save that. But I'm actually going to save mine to my desktop and then click save. Now, if you want a copy of this, you can't be bothered to do it all of yourself and you like this template, then there is a link in the description below where you can download it. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.